If you just like steam engines, then you've come to the wrong place, mister, because this is the Diesel Electric Modelers United 2023 Showcase at Sutton Coldfield Town Hall. We start the exhibition at Portway 4mm OO gauge layout by Stu Davies. Portway is a small terminus station somewhere in southwest England. Set in the early days of privatisation and served by Wessex trains, which ran services across the southwest from 2001 to 2006. The station details are based very loosely on locations such as St Ives, though with the addition of a couple of sidings used for infrastructure trains. And now we move to Hillport Goods, a 7mm O-gauge layout by Steve Farmer. This is Steve's first foray into O-gauge and the release of the Daypole 08 shunter is to blame. Steve wanted a layout to shunt wagons around on. And this layout is set in North Staffordshire in the period of the late 70s. It represents a small urban yard of a type that was soon to disappear. The yard handles many commodities and sundry traffic in vans and open wagons, which are bought in on trip workings. Also to be seen is domestic coal traffic, along with tanks of heating oil to the fuel siding. Traffic to Midland Steel and Abion Cement Terminal also come into the yard to run round or drop wagons off to be shunted out. Track work is by Pico and control is analogue with a handheld controller to allow movement up and down the layout. Buildings are from the Skytrex range or are scratch built with greenery from woodland scenics and green scene. Locos are ready to run from Hellion and Daypole with rolling stock from various manufacturers of kits in O-Gage along with a few ready to run wagons. Here we see the infamous 08 shunter doing its work as it moves a couple of wagons around the yard before attaching to a brake van and departing off scene. Now we are at New Dolby Research Division, a 2mm N-gauge layout by Andy Porter. New Dolby is a fictionist replacement for the current existing Railway Technical Centre at Derby. Due to the RTC occupying prime land in the centre of Derby, the outfit has been uprooted and relocated to the former Asphalt B Super Pit Hollowell Steelworks sites at the foot of the old Derby test track near Melton Mowbray, Leicestershire, with the former site being sold off for large-scale residential development. The layout represents a slice of a much larger complex which, altogether, forms Network Rail's new rail research and testing facility. The centre operates and maintains Network Rail's fleet of measurement vehicles and also provides a certain degree of workforce development from this central location which also boasts its very own dedicated 13.5 mile long test track allowing measurement vehicle calibration and testing to be carried out off network and out of the way with revenue earning flows. We move from Leicestershire to deepest, darkest Cornwall. Wheel Imogen, a 4mm OO gauge layout by Richard Pedder. Wheel Imogen is a small china clay work set somewhere alongside the Newquay branch in the early summer 
1999. Given the small space that was available, a fictional track plan has been used taking elements from a number of real works, along with structures heavily based on prototypes. In order to maximise operational potential of the lab, the works serves all three of the main methods of dispatching clay. Bulk powder, slurry and bagged clay. After the previous iteration of the layout was badly damaged in storage through Covid, the layout was completely rebuilt over a period of the month leading up to its debut at the Kaong Show in April of this year. As well as the usual mix of detailed weathered ready to run stock, the layout is also home to a wide range of 3D printed slurry tanks. Class 37521 in EWS livery is seen hard at work as it moves tanks around the works. We now move to Shirebrook, a 2mm N gauge layout by Duncan Hunnies. Layout building started about 25 years ago. The owner wanted to run scale length freight trains in a prototypical setting. Shirebrook was chosen as it was located on a freight only line centered on a largely freight only system. The owner decided to model an open station so the occasional passenger service could be included. In reality, the station only reopened after the depot closed. The overall length of the model from the viaduct to station road overbridge is close to prototype. There are several deviations from the prototype to fit all the railway features onto the baseboards. The track pad is essentially accurate. The track used is Pico Fine Scale Code 55. The majority of the buildings are scratch built, the stock is all weathered and fitted with super detailing where appropriate. Many locos are repainted and renumbered. The rolling stock has many kit built wagons alongside standard ready to run examples. The layout is wired in DC and has five control panels. The scenery has been coloured to portray a winter landscape. Here we can see a Class 58 and large logo grey, arguably the best delivery for that logo. Moving around the depot as a Class 60 passes by with a merry-go-round train. Modelling in N-Gage really does make full use of the concept of railway and the landscape, and it works so well on this layout. I also like the fact that it is modelled in winter, which is quite rare because, as we know, most layouts are modelled in the summer period. But here it's definitely got that bleak, cold feel, but it's a wonder to watch. As you can see in the next few minutes, as we struggle to tear ourselves away from Shirebrook.
And now we move to Wales with Pefeli, the 4mm P4 by Jonathan Bucky. Situated in northwest corner of Wales on the Lynn Peninsula, Pefeli is the northern terminus of the Cambrian Coast Railway. <coughs> Eight return workings a day traverse the coastal route to McCumpleth, with services continuing onward to Shrewsbury. The layout attempts to convey an impression of the station and its surrounding area as it appeared between 2000 and 2012, prior to ERTMS coming into operation, with a regular DMU passenger service interspared with an occasional heritage rail tour or engineer's train. Buildings and associated details have been laser cut from MDF, Roadmark, etc., using drawings created in AutoCAD. Where possible, these drawings are based on actual plans obtained through Gwynedd Council or where these are unavailable from photographs or a Google Street View survey. Locos and rolling stock are based on prototypes recorded as running on the Cambrian line during the period model. These are predominantly ready to run models from Backman. Daypole, Hellion, or Hornby, converted to P4 by replacing the wheels with either Black Beetles or the appropriate Allen Gibson conversion set. The layout is operated by DCC using NCE equipment. Points are driven by standard servos controlled through an ESU switch pilot servo configured for analog input. An Arriva Trains liveried Class 158 departs the station as a Class 66 patiently waits for it to depart so it can continue with its run round of its engineer's train. <coughs> I appreciated the gentle pace of this layout because it gave me time to actually absorb and take in the incredible work on the buildings. This was by far the best layout, I think, building-wise at the show. An absolute, outstanding piece of modelling. <coughs> Hold the saxophone. We're off to Bakewell Street, not Baker's. A 7mm OG layout by Chris Hopper. Bakewell Street started off as a simple test track laid out as an inglenook or shunting twig and has been built using Pico track. Most of the time it's operated using a card based shunting puzzle. It is loosely based on the 1960s and 1970s period and can be located on the BR Western region somewhere in Gloucestershire or on the London Midland region on Merseyside. Signal boxes can be swapped to reflect the geography. The layout is run with an NCE DCC system and the locomotives are sand chipped. The couplings are MSE Sprat and Winkle operated using both fixed and electro methods. The owners try to operate hands off as much as possible. The locomotives are a mixture of kit built and ready to run and the wagons are mainly kit built plastic and brass kits from Slater's Parkside and Connoisseur. The layout uses the clever trick of mirrors in certain places to make it seem bigger than it is. One is just below the bridge, and makes the canal look slightly larger. The other is at the end of the yard, and I'll be honest, it fooled my boy, he kept looking for the fiddle yard, but just wasn't there. If you keep your old copies of uh, model magazines, then Bakewell Street was featured in Railway Modeler in July 2020. And now for something completely different. Bristol Avon Bridge, in OO gauge by Keith Sully. And I say it's completely different because this layout forces you to look at it from different points of view. You can't get a clear view without actually ducking and diving and sort of peering through the gaps. It's a clever idea, really. It gives it a more of a 
realistic rather than film. Bristol Avon Bridge came about from nostalgia for the heyday of the HST, combined with the owner's interest in mail and newspaper traffic, and a little of what they remember of visits to Bristol Temple Meads. The layout is loosely based upon platforms 1 to 5 of Bristol's new train shed, depicting parcels and mail traffic of the 70s and 80s in a familiar location. Long distance trains getting crew or local changes, some being marginal or taken out of service to the nearby carry sidings or to Bath Road Depot. It was important to be able to run full length HSTs and at the station to off the DMUs plying their train. To see most train movements, you will need to look through the windows of the station building, under the canopies or out from the booking hall entrance across the platforms into the station. The owner chose this slightly unusual viewpoint as they love the layers that challenge you to look in the scene. A wide variety of traction can be seen as trains arrive from all over the UK. The layout operates from the dawn of the HST through to the sectorisation of the 80s with a wide variety of trains in addition to the mail passing through to the southwest. Here we see a class 47 city of Truro departing with a newspaper working. And our final train for our visit to Bristol Avon Bridge is a HST which arrives, changes ends and departs back to where. And now we come to Brunswick Yard in 4mm OO gauge by Peter Degenham. Brunswick Yard is a fictitious location somewhere in the Midlands of England. There's a variety of stock running on it that could have been seen between 2010 and the present day. The layout consists of bi-directional through mainline, two sidings, a stabling point and a maintenance shed road. Operation of the layout involves various locos traversing wagons through the layout mainline to and from the wagon works, with repaired wagons being held in the sidings awaiting collection. It is also home to a small maintenance depot, and various locos can be seen visiting for light repairs. The stock being assembled for the layout roster will consist mainly of DRS, Colas, and network rare examples. The wagons will be a bit of everything on the network, but has been seen some repairs done with the off-scene wagon works. Of course, it wouldn't be one of my exhibition videos without the obligatory shot taken by my boy. Here is a class 97 leaving the line base in its depth. The driver of the 97 makes sure he clears the points before changing ends and heading towards the sidings so that he may pick up his coaches.
Any other? Should I try it? I don't think it's right. I'll set up that end. And now we move on to Scotland, Tullock Bridge, formerly to Hero Gage by Martin Stewart. Tullock Bridge is set on the West Highland Line, a few stations south of Fort William. The station itself serves a very small local population. It is also a gateway for tourists, hikers and cyclists. Amongst the usual passenger carrying multiple units, visitors can also view several freight workings, including timber, alumina, oil and engineers workings. The Caledonian sleeper makes a stop heading both north and south and gives travellers the opportunity to travel to Scotland's central belt or further afield to London. Operational period covers 2004 right up to the present day. And our final layout of the show is Southgate Park in 4mm OO gauge, presented by Mark Miller and Shane Wilton. Southgate Park is situated on the southwestern section of the southern region and is somewhere in the vicinity of Kew Bridge and Brentford after Old Kew Junction. With a bit of alternative history and a couple of strategically placed junctions, Southgate Park is served by local services from Waterloo, which terminate at the bay at semi-fast from Waterloo, Basingstoke, Guildford and Salisbury. The services utilise a variety of VEPs, SIGs, PAPs, SEPs and loco hall trains from the Salisbury services. Occasional peak hour services from Paddington and Reading are possible by way of a link from the Great Western Main Line to the North London Line at Acton, and a further link with the Brentford branch to the west of Brentford. These are usually formed of class DMUs with the occasional local hold service to Newbury or Oxford. The roar of a tractor is heard from under the bridge as a class 37 passes through with a speed link freight. In the opposite direction, a plastic pig departs the station, heading towards Waterloo. If you've enjoyed this video then please hit the like button. If you didn't like it because it didn't have steam engines, then please don't hit the dislike button. That's just mean. I warned you at the beginning. Otherwise, if you didn't like it, you didn't like it. If you do like my videos though, please click the subscribe button and you can see more. And hopefully 
I'll see you again next time. Thank you for watching. We've got three next year already. Oh, cool.